Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed, highly flavored, and favored? Are you ready for war? Praise God. God is raising up and training up warriors for the Most High. He's exposing the sheep and the goats. Amen. The ones who are willing to get into battle and the cowards. Praise God. You know, we're going to another place tonight. Oh, put on your stepping shoes. You're stepping out. Take your shoes off, I guess. <laughs> Glory. Stand before your mirror tonight and step through. Everyone say, I'm stepping through my mirror tonight. We are not, it doesn't matter what your mirror says. You're stepping through. Why? Because it's important to know what's on the other side. Realities. Everybody wants to know the truth. It's unfortunate people accept so many things as a truth. But they're really not truth. They're lies and deception. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. And his power is fear. It's pretty amazing in the area to where the time and season that we are in right now and what's going on. God is not only bringing revival, amen, but he's establishing an area to where there's a huge harvest. Christ is coming through the body first before he comes personally, amen. That means the anointing must increase. That means his power must increase. And that means that more boldness will come. Provision will come, strategy will come, and weaponry will come. It's falling right now. It's being released all over the world to those who are able and willing to grab it. You can't grab it in the flesh. You can only grab it in the spirit. See, revelation comes by the spirit, not by the flesh. You can get illuminated, but illumination is not revelation. Revelation is nuggets from the throne room of God that feed your inner man and change you. And that purpose is to bring you more and more into his likeness and into his image. In Genesis chapter 1, how many know God is omnipotent? He's all-powerful, all-seeing. Amen? He's got great love. Amen? Amen? But the Bible also warns us to be careful. He can also destroy you. See, there's so many times where the reality of who he is isn't really reached yet. And I don't know if we can reach it in its fullness anyways. Amen? But there's an area of a level of reality that we must reach. Because when you reach the area of re reality of that level to where who he is, you will know who you are. This is where identity comes into play. Because so many times people lose their identity. Or they're still looking for their identity. I know many people call themselves Christians because they say they are. But they don't act like a Christian. They don't worship like a Christian. That means Christ-like. That means there's a sense in the area to where you are connected to his presence. And in this, there's such a change and shift to we must be willing to let go of everything. Everything. There wasn't one disciple in the gospel. When he went to them, he said, follow me, and they dropped it. They had businesses, everything. They knew their calling. They knew they were called. They looked at Jesus as their identity. They didn't look at their abilities, their talents, how much fish they had, how much money they had, how many boats they had. They, didn't, they left it all behind. They didn't look at their areas of their children, their families, or anything else as their identity. Their identity was now in him. That means that something was changing in them. Something was connected to them. There was an awakening within them realizing that there was a battle, a want to shed the old nature and put on the new one. 
In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, let's speak it together. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. In other words, dominion everything. So God was creating something in his whole creation of the universe, of the earth, and animals, and everything else. He said, listen, I'm going to create an entity, a life force, in my image, in my likeness, to what? Take care of my creation. Does everybody get this? To do what? Take care of my creation. So he created Adam and Eve. In verse 27, it says, God, So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seeds, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every herb for food. And so it was. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. In other words, God, the creator of all existence, seen and unseen, he created a life force from his power to exist in a multi-dimensional realm. Like I said, we're stepping through the mirror tonight. Is everybody with me? For what? To have dominion over all the things of all the other life forms God created on this earth. He, we were the caretakers then. Amen? We were the enforcers to keep everything right. That's what Adam and Eve was created for. And where God put him in a specific territory to take care and care for his manifested life forces. And they can only do this in a divine nature. They could only do this in a, they couldn't do this in the flesh. They couldn't do it in any other way. They had, they have the life force of God Almighty, the creator, dwelling in them. You know, did you ever notice that so many times you may get shocked touching something? You know, you might shake hands with somebody and get shocked, or you get out of your car and, pfft, you know. Why? Because you are electricity. <laughs> You're a life force. The problem is everybody keeps looking in the mirror and allowing the mirror to determine who they are. When we have to start looking through the mirror, this has got nothing to do with color, size, nationality, English, it doesn't matter what language. This is a life force from God. That's an eternal life force only from him. It is called a divine nature. Is everybody okay? Genesis 2. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, did God create the dust of the ground? Yeah. So that was substance. And he breathed into his nostrils. What did he breathe? His life force. He, he took a part of his life force and put it in him. The creator, amen, his presence, his energy, his life force, he put into a body that he made out of his own creation called substance. And he called it a living being. That means to be. Is everybody all right? And the man became a what? Living being. Verse 8, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he formed. 
And out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of life was there so that they could maintain this eternal divine nature. So they had to partake of it. Amen? I'm not going to get into all of that, but hallelujah. So out of his created substance, God formed a unique self-sustaining body. And he put his spirit, his breath, into it and created a life force existing in a protected environment hmm. to care for his creation as a living being, amen, which means to be or to exist, sustained by his power from, uh, sustained by his power, which he formed a divine nature through obedience and training. Number a divine nature, in other words, when you are born again, you go through a process of conversion. Why? When a baby comes into this realm, it goes through a process of conversion. It begins to learn. It may, you, listen, Adam and Eve didn't, weren't a baby, were they? No. They were adults. They were given, this, they were born with a divine nature. Now God was going to train them with this divine nature because they were called to have dominion over all his creation. Think about that. See, we got to stop looking at flesh. We got to stop looking at all of the things that we see and begin to look. You know, the Matrix was a powerful example of that. Think about that. What did they see? Energy. The Matrix is a reality. We live in a Matrix. Amen? And the only way out of it is through Christ. That's it. But everything else is run by deception. And so many people are caught up in this deception that they're missing. They can't even get through that mirror. They can't even get in the spirit. They can't even endure. They can't fight. And they can't sustain themselves. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. So, in this divine nature is formed by obedience, training, challenges. Amen? And you are going to gain knowledge through this also. So you got to look at something like there was a terrestrial force with a divine nature. <laughs> Think about this. In Genesis 3. A terrestrial life force. Genesis 3, is everybody there? In verse thir uh, 13. And the Lord God said to the woman, of course, we know that they blew it. Amen? We're not going to get into all of how they blew it. But they blew it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I what? I ate, I partook, I agreed. And the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you shall go. So he was upright. Hello? And you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put hatred or enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel, and that's what happened at the cross. And to, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow, your conception. In pain you will, shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife. Now, don't get this wrong. Amen. It's not because his wife spoke. You know, you got a lot of religious people using this scripture. Man, shut up, will man. You know, that ain't the way it is. What he's saying, you rejected my voice and listened to hers. That's what he's saying. Because you have rejected my voice and listened to another voice, 
your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the herb of the field, and in sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. As also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. In other words, life for life. Amen. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, which supported the divine energy force, amen, the divine nature, and eat, he will live forever. And he said, no, that ain't going to happen because it's now corrupted. So he didn't want a life provision for eternity to be granted to a polluted nature, a fallen nature. He told him it would die. Amen. So he drove, um, therefore the Lord God sent them out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed the cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and the flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. So nobody had access to it again. So we see that the serpent is a celestial life form with a fallen nature. Get this. He's a celestial life form with a fallen nature. Amen? That's called a race of serpents. Adam rejecting the voice of the Lord, his creator, and agreeing with the voice of creation, his wife, removed the divine nature, that life force, and now he became a fallen nature of existence and God cutting off the supply line of life for the divine nature, that's called death. So when a person is dying, they no longer connected to the life force. To die is to lose the ability to exist in a designated environmental realm. Adam and Eve were removed, removed from the garden. That was a designated environmental realm for them. Everything was provided. The location of the tree of life. They were divine nature. They were a life force. They were eternal. They couldn't die. The only thing that could kill them was sin. Disobedience. Amen. The only thing. Now, God said, well, you know, now that they're like us, knowing the knowledge of good and evil. So, righteousness was exchanged now for good and evil. Amen. Is everybody okay? In Romans chapter 8. Follow. From the fallen to divine. We've got to begin to understand about the fallen nature. In Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Romans 8, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Oh, happy days. There is therefore now no what? Condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. In other words, they're connected. So there's a lot of people saying, I'm a Christian. Amen? But they're walking according to the flesh. Why? To walk according to the flesh is to walk according to the fallen nature. A walk according to carnality is according to the fallen nature. Nothing of the fallen nature will enter eternity. Nothing. 
everybody get it? If you're living a life of carnality and the fallen nature, you have no access home. None. But I accepted Jesus Christ 20 years ago. It's not how you begin. It's how you end. Who do you serve today? And who do you serve when you die? When you give up that last breath, who are you serving? Amen. So he tells us right here, he says, for the law of the spirit of life. Everyone say spirit of life. That is the divine force. Amen. The law of the spirit of life. What is the law of the spirit of life? Anybody remember? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Now, what is sin? It's the presence of evil. That is the dark forces of evil. Amen? That's why it brings blindness. You and I were born in blindness. It's almost like what you might call dark matter, light matter, dark matter, you know? But it's a force. It's an energy. And it's a life being. God created it. When it rebelled against God, it became blinded. Got unplugged. No more life. It says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, which is the fallen nature, but according to the spirit, which is the new creation. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Hello. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded or fallen nature is what? Death. That's why he said, do, do not love the world. If you're a lover of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. For to be carnally minded, to be fallen nature minded, to think carnally, to think fleshly, is death. Why? Because as a man thinks, so he is or he becomes. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind, the physical fallen nature Mind is enmity against God, which means hatred. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Your carnal mind can't be converted. You need a new mind. It's called the mind of Christ. You need another spirit. Amen? So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. <laughs> Remember, the flesh and the carnal, they are the fallen nature of existence which is the result of corruption due by the cooperation with the main force of corruption, the serpent. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Life of Christ is the restored reunion of existence in a new life when someone comes to the Lord. And it's maintained by feeding from the tree of life, the power that gives life and maintains life in an eternal position of existence. In other words, Christ, the energy and the power that's in you now, places you not only here, but eternally. So you don't just exist. You exist here. Your existence right now in the Spirit is multi. Uh, it says that you are blessed at every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places, a joint heir of Christ. See, our carnal mind ain't going to get it. That's where you battle all the time. We battle all the time between the fallen nature and the divine nature. The whole focus of all of our trials, tribulations, and everything we're going through, no matter what, is God's trying to get us to a place where we have a yielded every part of our being and members to his spirit. Why? So we can be a host of heaven. Does everybody get it? So we can be a what? A host of heaven. Glory. Let's go a little further. Hmm. So the law of existence is sustained by denying the fallen life, which we call the deny yourself. It's a life force that feeds <laughs> on promoting self. <laughs> uh, 
The only way to overcome it is the existence of fight for the new life, the new man of existence, which has access to the presence. That's why the presence of God is so vital. Why? Because it's the same force that's in you that's now communing in one, oneness in his presence. So when we come together, we get strengthened. See, if we keep looking physically, it prevents things from happening. We have to have the eyes of the Spirit. We have to have the ears of the Spirit. So that when we worship the Lord, we're not just worshiping a person. We're worshiping a creator, the one that created you. And you're desiring to get into his presence because you become one. And when you leave his presence, you take a part of him to bring with you. And you've been refreshed, re-energized, and you're ever ready. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Romans, I think it is. I can't read it. Darn it. Yeah, Romans looks like 12. Romans 12. Glory. In verse 1 and 2, let's speak it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. So every day we're to present to the Lord our spirit, soul, and body, flesh, will, and desires, and possessions. It's yours, Lord. What you're doing, you're relinquishing yourself of all your possessions, of who you are, connected to the entanglements and affairs of this world. You are walking away from it every morning. What that allows you is to walk into his presence because you can't bring anything into his presence. Look at verse 2. He says, and do not be what? Conformed to this world. Now, being conformed to this world promotes a fallen nature. But be what? transformed by the renewing of your thoughts that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, don't go back to the corrupt nature, but go forward in the process of conversion and transformation into his image and likeness by resetting your train of thoughts on the things that are above, eternal, pure, righteous, and align your desires and your ways with the mind of Christ. That's a process. I'll say it again. <laughs> Don't go back to the corrupt nature, but go forward in the process of conversion and transformation into his image and likeness by resetting your train of thoughts. And you're going to reset your train of thoughts on the things that are above, eternal, pure, righteous, so that you're aligning your desires and ways with the mind of Christ. As a new created existence, a living being, in a temporary form. And the purpose of this is to perform his will in this realm. Is everybody with me? To do what? Perform his will in, in this realm. It cannot be done in the physical. It cannot be done in the carnal. Remember, he says anything that's being worked on, anything that when you bring it to me, he says when everything comes up, all of your works, everything, anything that wasn't done in the spirit will burn. I'll have no, no accomplishment. There are many people building a lot of things successful in the wrong assignment, and they'll have no credit for it. None. That's why it's important to be led by the Spirit. Well, I fit, what does Jesus say? 
He says, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, I did this, 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 and this, and that. I fed, I cast out devils, I did all of these things. And he's saying, I don't know you. There's no place for you. Why? Because lawlessness is disobedience to his will. It's disobedience to his call, to your calling, to the call he has for you. That's why you do not want to be successful in the wrong assignment. You'll have no credits. Amen? Oh, happy days. Thank you, Master. So you don't want to go back. You want to go forward as a new creation in Christ. Coming off of the corrupt, fallen nature into the new creation in an area where we are one in Christ, joint heirs, where his presence and his power now flows through us, where everything that he has paid the price for me and you, we've accepted, not rejected. Amen? Remember, we are now in a temporary form, even though we are eternal being. To perform righteousness and justice in a fallen realm of corruption. So everything in the world is corrupted. Amen? Go to Romans 8, 18. Is everybody there? Romans 8, 18. Let's speak it together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what? Revealed in us. See, we can't even comprehend the glory that's in us. We have to be reminded. We have to sometimes experience it. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the what? Sons of God. Who are the sons of God? We are. Because the creation itself also was to, will be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. It's contaminated. And to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption or the redemption of our body. Why? Because what's in you, he's in you, this life force, energy, new creation, God, his character, his spirit that's in you wants to just rip out of this place. So in that, you and I are just cooperating with him, allowing him and yielding to every area of our life so that he has control. We have surrendered. So we eagerly wait. Man, how many times have you gone through stuff going, man, I just, I'm tired. I'm done. Take me home. What you're doing is wanting a new glorified body. Amen? Because the... You can't get it in the closet, you know. It doesn't come from the dry cleaners either. It doesn't matter how many times you shower it, it's going to still be the same. <laughs> it must be crucified by being led by the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so in this, look at this, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now, not only that, but we as also the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption of, our, of the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Wow. So our creation groans awaiting, creation itself groans, awaiting the release from the force of corruption of bondage controlled by the prince of power of error. Because the world's controlled by the prince of power of error. That is the force of darkness, isn't it? It's wicked and evil. And it's waiting to be released into the hands 
of the righteous, the new creation and image and likeness and character of Christ Jesus. That we are the carriers of eternal life force of existence that battle the dark forces of evil and death. Remember, we talked about we are the restrainers. Amen? We are the restrainers. But how do you maintain that? You have to come to a reality and of identity of who you truly are, not in the physical. And so many times, many people don't even comprehend the area of in the spirit. Man, I saw a familiar spirit one time. I've seen many spirits, but. And this spirit was a life form. It was light. But it had no form. It just had a body. Almost, you didn't see fingers. You didn't see eyes. It was just a life form with a body that walked up to a gentleman that was next to me. And he was trying to get a word of the Lord for me. And when this spirit bent over and spoke to that dude's ear, the Lord said, do you want a word from me or from that familiar spirit? And I thought, whoa. And I said, what do I do? He said, bind it. So I turned my head. I was being polite. I bound that spirit in the name of Jesus. And that guy couldn't, he couldn't get nothing. And he said to me, take my hand. I think, what's got to take in your hand with a word from the Lord? And he said, squeeze it. I said, get out of here. <laughs> he was dealing with mixed anointing, familiar spirits. And too many believers deal with those things and don't even know it. Why? Because if you're in the flesh and the spirit in the flesh and the spirit, you're dealing with familiar spirits. And don't even know it. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, happy days. You know, that's why you, when you begin to look at Jesus... He is the Christ, the life force of God Almighty. Amen. Out of the substance, out of his word, he created his own body, created his own blood, sacrificed it to make an exchange because there had to be a price, life for life. Amen. His life for all of mankind willing to accept. And then he ascended and sent his spirit. See, the purpose of the price that he paid is so that when people repent, they would have been washed by the blood, activating the blood of Christ, because the blood always goes before the presence of God, the spirit. So before you come, you should be repenting. Lord, forgive me. Before you start worshiping, you should repent. Lord, forgive me. Why? You want to be washed with the blood. Some people don't get touched because they haven't repented yet. And they've touched unclean things, thought things, said things they shouldn't, and now they're contaminated. And then they expect God to touch them and fill them and dress them and possess them. It ain't going to happen. The blood always goes first. Say it with me. The blood always goes first. Why? Because the blood makes way for the presence. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. In other words, I didn't come to you in the flesh or a kernel. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. There was an exchange, the price. I was with you in weakness, in fear, in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men or fallen nature, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, who are not in the flesh, fallen nature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the wisdom of the rulers of this age, who are coming to what? Nothing. Why? Because they are of the fallen nature. It's going to come to nothing. 
Oh, uh, but we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? Our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen or ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, his life force. His life force that he shared with mankind. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except for the spirit of a man? In other words, he knows the things of the flesh, things of the carnal. Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the what? Spirit of God. So when the spirit of God is at present, you know all things. But he, listen, it's our responsibility to maintain and keep it activated. Amen? These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the fallen nature, the flesh man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are what? foolish to him nor can he know them because they are what spiritually discerned but he who is spiritually judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one why because god judges him for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ we have the thoughts of the life giver's ways of existence. We have them in us. Listen, after my visitation from the Lord and infilling of the Spirit, I didn't read the Word of God. But I knew the Word of God. I couldn't figure it out, and I didn't try to. My relationship with the Lord was, tell me what to do. I knew, I knew what was right, what was wrong, which was righteous, what were unrighteous, what was lawful, which was unlawful. I couldn't quote scriptures right away, but words were coming out of my mouth that were according to God's word. I didn't want to read the word because I said to him, you tell me what to do and I'll do it. He said, no, that's not how it's going to have to be all of that. You got to know my word because I want to line things up. See, I thought being born again, everybody went through the same thing I did. Then I found out it wasn't that way. Because I couldn't understand why we had to minister to believers. When they kept saying, well, we need to minister to believers. I thought, why? We need to minister to unbelievers. Why are we wasting our time with the believers? Because they haven't gone through the conversion. Because there's a conversion process. Why? The area of killing the old man, crucifying it. Killing that fallen nature that had taken over, that was lost in the garden. That flesh, that carnality, and strengthening the inner man. Being filled with the Spirit of God. Listen, half of the body still doesn't know how to get filled with the Spirit of God. They still play in religion. They think that their being good is okay. It isn't. If it's not a life of righteousness, that person's in trouble. And that can only be done by the presence of God. Amen? Go to Ezekiel 36 for a second. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. Verse 23. 36, 23. Is everybody there? 
Lord said, I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord God, says the Lord God, when I am what? Howled in you before their eyes. In other words, when I have taken possession of you. When I am expressing myself through you, they're going to get blown away. Verse 24. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a what? A new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone, which is the flesh stone, the carnal, or the hardened hearted stone, the fallen nature, the fallen nature stone, out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit, my life force of power within you, and it will cause you to walk in my statutes by what? Conviction, counsel, correction, and direction. And you will keep my judgments and you'll do them if you stay connected. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave you to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. He will cause you to obey. In this process of conversion, he's bringing us through that process where he's wanting us to surrender every part of our being. All of our members. Amen. Oh, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Fallen to divine. It's unfortunate many have gone from fallen to divine to fallen. Choices. But God never gives up. He's always waiting for a person to fulfill their vows, fulfill their promises. It's amazing when we're in trouble how we cry out to God. Oh, I'll do anything. Get a shower, eat some food, smell good. Hey, I'm all right. I'm all right. Not knowing that you will reap. Nobody gets away with it. Second Corinthians 5, verse 12. Is everybody there? Yeah, I made many promises when I was out in the world. But I didn't know about getting saved. But I always called on to God, man, I need your help. I'm going to die. <laughs> Overdosed so many times, I lost count. Broken up and packed ice. I lived to get high because I was an addict, but it was not about addiction. It was about I was demon-possessed from a life force of darkness wasn't giving me life, it was promoting death. Verse 12. Is everybody there? For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you an opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, or according to the fallen nature. But for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the fallen nature known as the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh. Now we know him thus no longer. And I can tell you, he does not look like Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. Why? Because he has a new life form. 
Old things they have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The only reason why old things are not passing away is because an individual is refusing to cooperate. You can blame everybody else. You're refusing to cooperate. You're refusing to deny yourself. You're refusing to pick up the sword and fight. You're refusing to worship. You're refusing to sow in the spirit. You're refusing. Doesn't matter about who. Everybody's an individual. Amen. Verse 18. He said, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled, get connected. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Not the goodness, the righteousness. Amen. <laughs> Colossians 2. In Christ is the divine life force of existence from the future. We are empowered producing righteousness, to perform justice and righteousness, watching over God's creation. Christ made us ambassadors over his creation. It was lost in the garden, but it's been restored again. Does everybody get this? This is where the battle is at. Too many people are not taking their authority and their position of who they are. Why? Because they don't know who they are. They're easily swayed. They're too caught up in self. You and I must become willing hosts of the divine nature of God. A willing host, not a rebellious host. Amen? Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Lord to see and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love, attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the what? Treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, which is the fallen nature, according to the basic principles of the world, which is the fallen nature, and not according to Christ, the divine nature and life force. For in him dwells all the what? fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And you are in him. Traditions of men, fallen nature, under the control of the dark forces of evil that rule the earth. We see their positions and authority all over. Amen. And it's amazing how many people have been taken captive under their agenda and promoting their agenda. It baffles me. But we certainly know that we are in the end days, don't we? We're in the end minutes. Ephesians chapter 2.
fallen to divine. Remember, the fallen nature is carnal, it's flesh. And it does not please God. In verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. This is the dark forces of evil among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of mind or thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, we were fallen nature, carnal, fleshly, he made us alive together in Christ once we repented and accepted Jesus. And he gave us a plan of escape called grace. And raised us up together. Look at this. And made us, is everybody with me in verse 6? Sit together where? In heavenly places in what? Christ. In other words, in his life form. In his life force. We are connected. We got to stop looking carnally. We got to start looking physically. We got to start looking at light. You are light. He is light. He is the life force. His life force is living in you. It's called a divine nature, which is constantly pressing against your carnality, your flesh, your fallen nature, trying to take possession of every area as a willing host of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. 1 John chapter 3. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. You know, one day I was driving and uh, I was backing out of this library. And as I was backing out, I was getting ready to take off, and the Lord said, go back. He said, there's somebody there that wants to talk to you. I'm thinking, who wants to talk to me? So I back up, I pull, and, the, and this dude comes out of the bushes. <laughs> he comes out with a rolled up thing. He must have been sleeping over there. He says, I need to talk to you. I said, well, get in. So he gets in. I'm like blown away already. I mean, you know, like, what? he gets in and he starts telling me about his troubles and this and that. I said, hold on a second. And uh, I share with him that I was in the same condition and so forth. And, and uh, I said, before I pray for you, I need to know if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. So I led him to the Lord. And he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I said, now I'm going to pray for you. And I laid my hands on him. And I said, in the name of Jesus, before I could finish anything, the power of God went through my head. I thought my body got split in half. Through my arms, hit this guy. He flew up, hit his head on the roof of the car, came down, looked at me, and rolled up his arms, rolled up his sleeves, said, look it, look it. He was a heroin addict. And he looked in the mirror, and his, when I first picked, talked to me, his eyes were red as could be. Man, he got cleaned up, healed instantly. He, he looked in the mirror. He said, I didn't go tell everybody. I didn't know he loved me so much. And he opened the door. He said, well, hold on a second. Like, he's got to give him a Bible or something. And he picked, rolled up the stuff and took off and ran. I thought, that was cool. Let's do this more. But I'm telling you what, I thought an axe hit my head. The power of God was so strong when it ripped through me. I mean, it, it took me off by surprise. You know, I wasn't expecting. <laughs> but I realized the life force and the power of God Almighty that holds everything together 
ripped right through me and into this guy. And let me tell you, that dude knew it. I knew it. I didn't even get a chance to pray for him. I just said, in the name of Jesus, I was thinking about this prayer, you know. Boom! I said, where are we going next? I wanted to lay hands on everybody. Are you kidding? I wanted to do, I was willing to destroy buildings and everything. I thought I had superpowers. I did! <laughs> I wasn't going to get a cape or anything like that, you know. I wasn't looking for a phone booth to change in her, although they had cell phones and so. But it was amazing to me, and that that changed me. I thought, "Wow, Lord, nothing was impossible. The power and the presence of God, nothing was impossible." And that guy's life changed. I haven't heard from him. I don't know. I've heard from some people, but. They haven't heard from him. Hallelujah, verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Let's speak it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know him. They may think you're strange. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, because we can't get the fullness of it yet. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, you ain't seen him as he really is. They got pictures of Jesus and all over the place. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that that wasn't him when he was here, but that's not what he is now. When I had my visitation from the Lord, he came in no form. It was ripping light, ripped through me, took me, blinded me, brought me to the other side. It was ripping light and power of love. I had no control, none. I was like a fish flapping out of water. I had no control over anything. This language flew through me. This, I couldn't tell. No, the only thing I knew, I was taken. I was abducted by God. I'd like that every day. Everybody wants to be abducted by God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the one that saw my change was my wife. So the first time she saw me, she called me an alien. Of course, we were divorced for three years. I got off the plane to see her. I wanted to tell her the truth. She poked me. You're an alien. Oh, I'm a superhero. <laughs> I'm in Christ. I'm a new creation. Anointed. Praise God. I want to close at 1 Corinthians 4. Let me tell you, when the presence of God comes on you, you know it. I could, I could stay here all night and tell you all kinds of things that have occurred. You can go to Eternal Library and find them, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Good. Let's speak it. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ, the presence, the power, the life force, the anointing. Hello. We are servants to the anointing. Amen. The anointing does not serve us. We serve him. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewardship that one be found what? Faithful. But with me, it was a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human fallen nature individual. In fact, I don't even judge myself. 
For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. Again, it's an opportunity to step through the mirror and get the reality of who you truly are. Not what the world says. Not what your feelings say. Please stop listening to your feelings. Chuchawawa. Remember, as a man thinks, so he what? Is. And feelings lie. Amen. Praise God. Father, thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that's been imparted of reality become a reality to your people, that we may grow and bear fruit for your glory in your image and likeness, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.